Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Welcome to the Q&A. Uh, I'm your fellow Arab, part of RBK, Raised by King. Best story out there, baby. Uh, today, we're here to answer a few questions that you guys sent over Discord. How are you today? I'm feeling pretty good, man. I, uh, having a decent day about a stream to get my mind off things. You know, it is what it is. It's just another day. Gotta get working. Stream, make some YouTube videos. Why choose RBK over other orgs or instead of waiting for a bigger org to notice you? Also, what are your tips to get noticed as a smaller creator or player? So, RBK approached me. I was in talks with a few tier one orgs, if you'd like to say, right? Like, you know, whatever you consider tier one, phase, TSM, energy. Um, but there was a problem why they couldn't pick me up and i'm not really upset by that right i think i have this is a big reason i like rbk is i know that i have much more leverage on my freedom right because of rbk being a smaller team i'm able to tweet the kind of comedy that i want to tweet without being heavily reprimanded that you would be on a bigger team right so with rbk first of all it's owned by my friend concealed um we we became boys before before i was even on rbk you know he's a dope very genuine guy and you know he recommended me to the guys at rbk and they basically said at first i don't know if we can get him on he tweets you know some pretty brand risk stuff uh, and eventually after a few months of that, they were like, wow, like this guy's going to the top. Let's, let's get him. You know, his, his tweets really aren't that bad. And, and that's the value for me the most. I don't really care about money. I don't care about like su support, right? I just want to be able to be me wherever I go. So when it comes to like joining a tier one bigger org, I, I really don't think that TSM, Energy, Liquid, all those teams, as much as I like them, would be able to have me on because I'm very, I tweet what the fuck I want. You know what I mean? And, and money doesn't matter to me. I'm not worried about losing a sponsorship or whatever it is for my tweets. Like, I kind of just want to share what I think, and that's my platform to do that. So, you know, with, with RBK being a smaller org, I get to do that, and I get to also kind of be the star, I guess, right? Like, I get to be the face of it, and that's really cool to me. I'd like to build my way up with RBK. Tips to getting noticed as a smaller creator. Uh, I'd say participate in like community events, right? So if people have like customs that they run, that doesn't mean stream snipe them, but it means participate in them, become an active member in the community that's typing, that's clipping things for that community, that's participating, whatever those community is, whatever streamer you like, right? Like I have a lot of viewers that over months have built a really good friendship with me and are now my good friends, right? Like you gotta understand just like you're a viewer, we were once a viewer. We still are viewers, right? We we view other people's streams. We're just human. People tell me like when they DM me, oh, Arab, you responded. Yeah, you caught me at a time that I'm free. I'm just a human, bro. Just because I have 40,000 Twitter followers or 130,000 Twitch followers doesn't mean I'm not human, right? So all these creators are also human. You just gotta, don't be like, don't be aggressive with it, right? Like don't, force yourself into someone's circle participate in events once they like you once they start recognizing your name they'll start making it they'll start pushing you i have a lot of people that i've pushed once i met them and i've posted many times etc to try to grow to try to help them grow and people have done that for me as well so what motivated you to keep going when you were a smaller streamer slash player so i go to school for computer engineering i'm almost done i got three classes left sitting in those classes Realizing that this would be the rest of my life when all I've ever enjoyed was making people laugh. Uh, like for me, it's not about being a player. For me, it's about being an entertainer. 
And it's always been about making people laugh. No matter where I went, I was good at making people laugh, right? Whether it was a crowd of computer engineer nerds that have no social life or a crowd of really social frat boys or frat girls, you know what I mean? Like I've had a desire to entertain people from when I was all the way since like when I was young, like fifth grade, I got in trouble for cracking a joke. High school, I got suspended twice for a joke. Uh, nothing like physical joke, like literal verbal jokes that just made everybody laugh. Um, and I was just a class clown. So, you know, when I when I when I was gaming, I was like, why am I gaming? I'm 20, right? I want to be one of the best in the world. At what? And I think I can be one of the best entertainers in the world. And so kind of stuck with me when I'm sitting in my computer engineering class and I'm cracking jokes to all these people that don't enjoy laughing. They enjoy laughing about PCBs, which are like circuit boards in computers. They look at a green piece of computer chip and they laugh at it. And I was like, I can make these people laugh. I can make anybody laugh. So that's, that's kind of how it went. I was like, yo, I'm gonna... I'm gonna pursue this. Um, I'm gaming a lot. Let me just stream, right? So when I first started, I was streaming so that I could justify gaming. Now I game so that I have something to stream. Like I enjoy streaming more than gaming now. What was it like working for Scarce? Um, so everybody that doesn't know on this channel, I used to work for Scarce. He's like the drama alert Keemstar competitor. I worked for Scarce for three to four years. It was a really good experience. Uh, essentially, I was addicted to watching YouTube drama because I was really in that space, like watching. I had YouTube friends, etc. And I was watching them anyway. Well, one day I discovered that these two YouTubers, Ethan and Mo Bradbury, had a superhero channel where like they would make kids videos. So these were the these really badass pranksters that would go around in the hood and prank people right but on the side they had this superhero channel that they had just started because there was millions of dollars in making kids videos like dressed up as superheroes with corny music and i figured that out and scarce dm me and he said hey bro delete this let me break the story come work for me and like you know here i am me with 700 followers hell yeah brother hell yeah i'm down I get to work for this famous YouTuber. And it's cool to see, like, now I'm kind of on that rise going to that, to that path. And Scarce and I are still friends. We're still boys. I'm still in his, the side of his channel description. What's your favorite video game of all time? What game did you first start playing competitively? I'd say my favorite video game of all time. Look, I've played a lot of video games very adamantly. Um, RuneScape was one of the longest games I ever played. RuneScape had to be one of my favorite. Then I played Modern Warfare 2 was one of my favorite games. But here, so I have four favorite games, right? There was RuneScape, Modern Warfare 2, League of Legends, and Fortnite. And honestly, I don't know if, whether it's because it's the position I'm in now, where I have this big following, I have a career out of it, but I'd probably have to say Fortnite. Fortnite's like no other game. League of Legends, I played for six years. I hit Masters. I'd probably say Fortnite. Fortnite, then RuneScape, then Modern Warfare 2. It's hard. It's hard to rate a game. Your favorite game of all time. My first competitive game was League of Legends, but competitive in other games isn't like... It's not like it is in Fortnite. Like, you gotta rank your way up, and you don't really make money. When is the OnlyFans dropping? Bro, I post pictures of my ass on Twitter. Where did you come from growing up? I was born in Georgia. I've lived in Georgia my whole life. But we have family businesses down in Lebanon, so... Every single summer, um, no exception up until like three years ago when I started streaming. Every single summer we go down to Lebanon for two and a half, three months to run the family businesses. Uh, pretty successful family business down there. So like Lebanon's really fun. It's kind of just a vacation. Life is simpler there. But I grew up here in Georgia. Life was, like I said, I'm just a class clown. You know, I would go to school, I'd come home, crack jokes. How does it feel being a God tier IGL? It's fun, man. Um, I wouldn't say I'm God tier yet. I'd say like I'm up there. I'd say I'm one of the better IGLs in North America. You know, I, people might laugh at that. But 
I, I think there's a lot to work on. And for me, the fun in Fortnite, obviously killing people and, and you know, absolutely outplaying someone is fun. But when you can solve the puzzle, right? That's how I see Fortnite. I see Fortnite as a puzzle. When you can solve a puzzle perfectly, it's so fun, right? When you can make it in the end game untouched, still max mats, you hit this god rotate, etc. It's, de it's definitely nice being an IGL, and I've always been a leader to my team. I led my school League of Legends team to a, to a region championship, the largest tournament in the Southeast, uh, Georgia Tech championship in 2017. As our jungler, I led the whole team, so it's pretty lit. What's your best memory in RBK? Uh, I remember going out to dinner with one, with both the owners, two out of three of the owners, and that was just a fun night. They really made me feel like I was at home. Luke's a dope guy. Uh, he bought me the most expensive steak I've ever seen in my life that day. It was a $75 steak, I think, or an $80 steak. It was so good. It was so good. And he just, uh, I had never really met him, right? I had talked to him over Discord. You know, just like hanging out with, that, with him that day, I realized he was kind of like me. All the RBK guys kind of are. Luke especially, he just likes to have fun. Um, he really values the comedy in life and like the good, just the good memories. And you know, that's kind of how I am. I like to, I save all my money and I like to just spend my money when I'm with friends making memories, so. Were you a refugee? I was a refugee, if you call it that. But I'll save that story for its own video. Do you ever see yourself moving away from gaming? I don't. Um, I've always been caught up in this online stuff. And gaming has been such a huge part of my life since I was like, literally probably like five. It's not like I can remember back then, but I can't remember when I even started. That's how long ago it's been. And I think gaming will always be a part of me, right? Like I. I look at my brother, not my younger brother that you guys know, but my older brother who runs a multi-million dollar marketing company. And after he's done working his 14 hour days, he goes to play two hours of Warzone with his boys. He's, I think he's playing Warzone right now with my cousins in Canada. And that's kind of what gaming's always been. It's been connecting people. I, I used to have my cousin who lived literally across the street from me. We'd see each other every day. And when I was 13 and he was 11, he moved to Canada. And this is my my best, my favorite cousin. And the way we talked to each other was through League of Legends. We would play RuneScape together and then we got addicted to League of Legends. We started playing League of Legends together. And that's how we kept our relationship and our bond. And I think gaming is a huge thing. You know, I, I think just because you're a gamer doesn't mean you have to be awkward and weird social. You know what I mean? Like. You can do all of it. What accomplishment are you most proud of and why? I'd say I'm, I'm most proud of making my dad proud. Going into like the gaming thing, he never understood it. And it, it, it was super hard. It was, it was super hard where, where I'd be sitting here after I come home from school, right? I wake up at 9 a.m. I go to school. I drive an hour to school. I, I go to school for seven hours. I drive an hour home. I get home at like six, okay? And I stream all the way till 2 a.m. and I do it again. And again, and again, every day. And every day I walk into the house and they look at me and they go, when are you going to get an internship for computer engineering? And my dad would walk into my room and instead of saying, are you working? He'd say, are you playing? And he'd be disappointed. And... And one day when I raised 10,000 for St. Jude, he told me he's proud of me for the first time. I'd say that's my biggest accomplishment. Woo! Sorry about that. <laughs> um, yeah, after that day, my dad started asking me. He started wanting to see numbers. He started realizing the impact because St. Jude is his favorite charity too. And he one time even sat me down and asked me how the game works. Not how the numbers work, how much money I'm making, how the game works. My dad wanted to know how Fortnite worked. And I sat there for an hour explaining to him how Fortnite worked. And I'm sure he doesn't remember a single thing of it, but he asked. And now he walks into my room. He's proud. He likes to see the numbers. He enjoys talking to stream. He puts on a show.
I think your parents' support matters a lot. And, and I think it pushed me as well to, to want this even more. And, and I don't, I'm not upset at them for, for that. You know, my parents came from Lebanon where my dad's dad was a gardener and he worked his ass off to give them a decent life in Lebanon. And then my dad came to Georgia in 1987 and worked his ass off while going full time to school so that he could give us a good life and so that he could build a name for himself. And what he knew was manual labor, right? My grandpa knew gardening. My dad went to school to become an engineer. Okay. His son, what, he's a fucking video gamer? You know, it makes sense. You know, it makes sense when all you know is war and you're a different generation. So that's what I'm most proud of. What are some top tier pros you've looked up to and why? Uh, I know this is kind of wild, but Chap is one of the people that taught me how to IGL. Uh, not personally, but I watched him and I used to watch him a lot. I know like, obviously it's crazy. There was the whole frenzy Chap drama. I'm pretty sure that's over with now but chap and that's why it was like kind of weird how it got so personal um yeah chap and bucky used to send me their vods from trios when they were the number one trio and he would let me look over how animal would igl them because bucky's a good friend of mine and that helped a lot i would study animal and so those are two people that i looked up to Right, like I said, I don't, I don't really care about the fighting in the game. Uh, I care about the, the brain part of the game. So, are you Muslim? <laughs> I get this question all the time, guys. Uh, I'm not Muslim. I'm Catholic. I'm not really practicing, but I would like to raise my kids Catholic. Uh, I think it's a great community. You know, not, not like I go to church. I don't. I can't count the last time I went to church. Probably Christmas. And yeah, I, I think the, the community and the morals that you get from there kind of give you a basic foundation. So, but like, don't ever come into my chat thinking just cause you're Muslim or something. I think 70% of my viewers are Muslim. Do you take competitive? Like, so, so like, don't think that you're, you, you're not welcome. I love everybody. So I make fun of everybody equally. <laughs> Do you take competitive Fortnite or content creation more seriously and why? Content creation. Um, I love competing, right? And that doesn't mean it stops my drive for competing, but if I had to pick one, it would be content creation. For me, it's about making people laugh. And, you know, I kind of just stumbled upon this competitive Fortnite thingy. And I love it. But it's always been about making people laugh from the beginning. You know, there's a reason I crack jokes about all crises. Because I know people are thinking them and I know people want to laugh rather than just see negativity on their timeline and sadness and I know I get a lot of shit for that. It's how I'll always be. With all the successes you found, what is the grand vision of Arab? Who slash where do you want to be in two to five years? <sighs> two to five years. I want to be one of the biggest entertainers on Twitch. I don't find it far off. I think I could be top five in two to five years whether you value that off sub count or what it is, um, viewer count. I think I could be a top streamer within two to five years. And I want to be one of the biggest esports entertainers in the world. I want my name to be known around all of Lebanon too, my home country. You know, I know people are already talking about me in Lebanon. I rep this flag like crazy. Nobody in Lebanon has really, yeah, there's so many Lebanese creators that don't rep it. And for me, being Lebanese is such a huge thing. I I vibe so hard with Lebanese people, Lebanese Americans. Uh, and, and that doesn't mean I don't vibe with all the other, right? Like like close Arabs, whatever it is, Saudi Arabia, Syrian, Palestinian. But for me, you know, I want... Gaming cafes are a big thing in Lebanon because people don't really have internet and like money to buy PCs. I want my stream on every gaming cafe in Lebanon. You know, I want them, when I turn it on, they go, Oh, Arab is live! And I'm there. And they know, this guy's Lebanese, this is our fucking guy. I think that would show my family too, another level of, wow, my son did it. 
What would you say to all the tier two players out there who are trying to get their name recognized? Watch my Inside the Mind videos <laughs> and uh, maybe you'll get good enough to to compete at that level. A lot of people have already watched them and learned, you know, little secrets to, to become top players. So, but to get noticed, it kind of just goes back to that same thing. Be part of a community or get your name out on the leaderboards over and over. And yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you guys so much. This was a dope AMA. Uh, I cried during it, so maybe that'll get some clicks. <laughs> um, if you guys want to check me out, my Twitter is your fellow Arab. I'm going to say it's here on the screen. That way the editor has to put it in. That's right, Weston. Um, my YouTube, your fellow Arab. It's your fellow Arab everywhere except for Twitch. It's Arab. Thank you guys so much. Um... It was a pleasure. See you guys later. Raised by kings. The fuck up, baby.